but we're going to go through the the journal entries. And I think this is how investigators had such much such details about what went on with the kids. Um, initially, I thought maybe the kids were talking. Maybe the kids were, you know, giving information to law enforcement. But a lot of the evidence seems to be in these journals. And I remember, and I wonder if Jody was like, fuck, I can't believe that bitch documented everything. Hey, y'all, this is going to be some, some dark stuff because we are going to get into Ruby Frankie's head. She kept a journal entry. I, it's my belief that it's hers, not Ruby, or not Jody Hildebrandt, but we get to see how she viewed her children, specifically two of the children, two of the younger ones, and how she and both Jody disciplined them during the summertime before they were found. And I mentioned this in my other video, like if you guys had like a rough week, if you're looking to go into the weekend, you know, with some good vibes, maybe watch this video in a couple of days, couple of weeks, because going into this, we really do get into her head. Um, and again, this is from her perspective. We don't know if everything that she documented in here was true or not. She writes dialogue between her, her children. She talks about the things that happen and we see everything from her just from her very nasty, cruel perspective. I think even reading these journal entries was pushing my boundaries a little bit, but I also do think it's important for people to know what what evil shit these two women did to the two kids. Um, I, I feel like what was written in the police reports, I feel like it barely covered any of it. Like it was just so, it feels a lot lighter. Now that I went through the sentencing and some of the hearings and seeing the women there, I I don't believe any of the BS, okay? Any of the stuff that she was saying, Ruby Frankie was saying at sentencing, I don't believe her. I, I just really don't. Um, and I do go into that when we listen to the jailhouse calls. I'll put that in a separate video as to why I think the way it did. Um, initially, I was trying to give her, you know, benefit of the doubt. But now I'm just like, mm-mm, mm-mm. This woman is completely, completely manipulative. And I felt like, you know, maybe she was even tricking me as well. All right, so we got timeline. May 21st, 2023, Jody receives blessing from Temple President Steve Kaplan. Steve, where are you at? May 22nd, Ruby, name of the children, A-J-R-E, comes down to Jody's to help spring clean. That seems to be a very common theme with these people, using your children to help clean. I remember with Pam Botchner, two of the kids were with her because Pam was like, you know what? I have people that are coming over. Send your kids over. They can help me clean the house. <laughs> May 28, meet Jeremy Juggy. Don't know who that is. June 6, June 13, Jody goes to SLC. Um, is that a name of the church? To meet with Jeremy Jaggy and Brad Wilcox. You guys want to Google those people? Dear future consequences. R, that's one of the children, refuses to do lawsuits. He says he is done. That was June 30th. July 1st. R is to stay outside, sleep outside. This is July. I'm assuming it's going to be really hot during July and nighttime too. Only comes to the bathroom and shower. July 14, E, the girl, refuses to work, screams, has hair shaved off. Who, who does this? So law enforcement... When they went over to ransack Jody's house, they found one of the children hiding in the closet floor, just sitting there, hiding. She wouldn't come out for four hours. Four hours. They had to lure her out. They had to give her some pizza and then finally get her to trust them that she can leave. At first, when they saw her, they thought she was a little boy because they shaved her fucking head off. Like, who, who does that? What is a wall sit? Um... Imagine you're sitting in a chair, but you're leaning against the wall. That's my understanding of what a wall sit is. Russell, or R, runs away around 1.15 a.m. Ruby finds him at 3.14 a.m. Wait, is she... Hold on a second. Is she talking about herself in third person? Jody, E, and J arrive, sorry, drive to Arizona and find property. Land, exclamation mark. A bunch of redactions. July 9, Sunday. R turns 12 tomorrow. I never envisioned him being 12 and still pooping slash peeing himself. Jeez. 
if your child is 12 years old and still is wetting themselves or whatever, maybe it's you. Satanic choices lead one to become destitute, even in the most affluential homes. July 10, on a Monday, it's R's birthday. He doesn't even know what month it is. E and R have been in so much deviant behavior, they won't control their bodily functions. They are both fearers. What the fuck does that say? They are both fear fearers their selfish sinful lifestyle and it's being intervened upon i told r he emulates a snake you tell you told a 12 year old this he slithers and sneaks around looking for opportunities when no one is watching then he scurries if he wants to emulate the savior he needs to be a hundred percent obedient with exactness no wavering no hiding r lies i mean all the time because he's probably scared of you guys he is a compulsive liar i would never have suspected this the entire experience the shock to my system i would have suspected the cold dead heart r has Did it? Know where to look. He has always been able to get what he wants, and now he can't. He is furious. Oh, furious. Okay. I was like, what is that word? Thank you. Yeah, these two nut jobs were obsessed. I told them if he is divulge everything, I told him if he divulged everything, he would automatically begin repenting. I asked if there was. It's all been redacted. I told R that he needs God. I invited him to fast and pray. R is in and out of possession. He is workable and calm. Oh my God, this is so sad. He is workable for a bit and then angry and defiant the next. The only consistent thing about R is that he lies. E is better behaved with Jody. She likes to think she can still manipulate me. Oh my God. How old is E at this time? E was one, was e one year younger than R? I gave her a pixie haircut. All her long hair is gone. No more distracting with hair. R told me he would rather have a glass of water than me as his, as his mom. He was probably really thirsty. I mean, he was emaciated. He probably was like thirsty as heck. They were living outside. I wouldn't be surprised if he said he'd rather have a glass of water than having her as his mom. July 30, uh, July 11. Big day for evil. E manipulates me. She won't scream when Jody's around, but with me, she wails all night. E screamed and cried and would hit her head on the tile floor. Today, Jody confronted her. E admits to putting on a show for her mother. E says, I wonder if she actually admitted that or if they put words in her mouth. Like what kind of child says, oh, hey, I was just putting a show for my mom. E says she wants to be pitiful. Yeah, I wonder if words are being put in their kids' mouths. R was told to stand in the sun with his sun hat. He is defiant. No. I tell him a couple more times. R or I should say his demon stays in the shade. I push R into the sun. R comes back. I come back with a cactus poker. When I poke his back to get in the sun, R doesn't even flinch. I poke him on the neck. He is in a trance and doesn't appear to feel anything. Jody taps him on the cheeks to wake him up. The devil doesn't like when you get your subject to agree to truth. R, do you know I love you? Yes, ma'am. R, do you know? I don't know what that says. G. Joe loves you? I don't know what that is. Yes, ma'am. Do you know the Savior loves you? Yes, ma'am. R wants out of his outcomes. After our talk, R stays in the shade. I take my old mop water and go to R. I show R the water. Then I pour the water on R. It's hot outside. It feels good, doesn't it? He says, yes. Your old mop water? 
Oh my god, this shit is like fucking crazy. An hour later, G Joe. Is that supposed to be Jody? Well, I don't. I don't know what this is. An hour later, G Joe takes R on a on a little walk to the pool. She talks on how R has love twisted. If R likes something, someone does, he calls it love. If he doesn't, he thinks it's not loving. G. Joe then push R into the pool. R swam to the side. G. Joe pulled him out. Feel good? Refreshing? Yes, ma'am. G. Joe equals Art Garden Jody? I don't know. I'm assuming it's Jody. I went out a couple of hours later and asked if he wanted to the pool again. Yes, ma'am. Will you let me push you in? R laugh. Then try not to act too excited. R cooled off and went back to his spot. I put my hands on his face. R, have you ever heard someone talk underwater? Yes, ma'am. I know R is in there somewhere. I know deep down under all this anger, you can hear me. It may sound like I'm underwater with you, but hear me. I love you. Ugh, some really weird manipulation shit. R got teary. Then I put my hand tightly over his nose and mouth. I am coming for you in this water and putting my hands on your nose slash mouth. The devil lies and says, I'm hurting you, abusing you. <laughs> so she knows abuse. But R, what am I really doing? You are putting oxygen on me to help me breathe. Yes, that's right. R looked like he wanted to beat me up this morning, and then he was intrigued and interested. And then two hours later, he drinks water from the house. He steals water. This is so fucking batshit crazy. R is compulsive. He feels no remorse for his choices. He shuts down and says he wants to go to jail. Oh, um, I think um, when he goes to the neighbor's house, there's like a ring doorbell. So he initially goes to the neighbor's house and he tells the neighbors to take him to jail. Something like that. And the neighbors were really confused. Um, he was like, can you point me to the direction? And the neighbor was like, oh, why? Why? And he's like, oh, it's personal business. I don't know if she was drowning them, but she was pushing them into the pool and throwing mob water on them. R says he worships the devil and has no interest in changing. I want the outcome of being changed, but I don't want to do the work that it requires. R doesn't actually know what jail means. He has no comprehension what throwing your life away means. He just wants the immediate gratification of sitting in an air-conditioned car ride to juvie. He wants stimulus. <laughs> Dude, Ruby is... Okay, I'm sorry. She's so demented. Do not let her out. R is so back and forth. R stole water. He was so angry and looked like he wanted to fist up. I put my hands on his shoulders and told him I love him. Oh my God, this manipulation is crazy. I told him he has no idea what he is doing, but I do. I can help him. I told him, give me your demon friend a message for me. I will not rest. I will not stop. I will not leave. I will fight him until the day you die. I have the power of God and he must obey. I beat Satan. I win. Then I looked in R's eyes and with power and authority commanded, get out now, go. R immediately smiled, cried, slumped, Satan. He's gone. He's left. I took e &R on a car drive to the something gas station. I told E she, is never going, she was never going home. I showed her pictures of her on the swing under the big tree she saw a girl who was hiding who enjoyed tricks i told her i saw a daughter of god and with divine worth. e manipulated during the car drive r appeared to soften wait so is she admitting to manipulating her kids and that she's like patting herself on the back for manipulating one of the kids oh my god i need lip chop Listen, if there was anyone that was possessed, it was Ruby and it was Jody, okay? They possessed each other. I 
I don't know. It says E manipulated during the car drive. R appeared to soften. I feel like she's like saying that like she, man- she was able to manipulate the daughter. I don't know. I stopped the car and we all got off to view the sunset. I told E she needs to stop her fantasy. She is not innocent. Who tells kids this? She can't be innocent through repentance. Don't waste more time. R and E have been counting days. R something knows yesterday was his birthday. Oh. E told me she figures they had been here eight weeks. I asked E if she felt like she had made progress over the eight weeks. Yes, exclamation mark. I told her she was delusional. She has made no progress. She continues to lie and manipulate. Last night, her screaming and trance headbanging were evidence of no change. July 12. When were the kids found again? Uh, Was it in August? Took the kids on a four-hour car ride. We stopped at Gunlock Lake, and I shared my love for them. We watched a baby cow get loose and walk into the road in front of us. I made an analogy of the not-so-wise calf to them. I was keeping them safe when they want to, when they want to run in the road. We drove up to maybe Vegas. I bought a volcano pie. I told the kids the pie was to thank G. Joe for her home care and time oh so she didn't buy the ki- pie for the kids she bought it for jody r appeared in rage e was manipulative oh manipulative this is the day e anticipates breaking her two-day fast what they were making these kids do a fast a two-day fast when we get home to g joe I let R know she has hardened her heart and would do one more day of fasting to invite her to humble. E flips out and begins ranting. She refuses to give up. She lies on the floor all day speaking dishonest chants because G. Joe is on the phone with clients. I don't go in and match her level of aggression. All day, E makes rhythms above. My mom starves me, calls it fasting. Oh my God, I'm so glad these kids are smart. My mom won't lift two fingers and bring me food because all she does is lie on the bed and eat brownies. So you're telling me this fucking bitch was eating brownies, laying on her bed while her kids were starving, fasting. My mom says she is the most loving mom in the world, blah, blah, blah. If I can't ever go home, then what's the point in being obedient? I'm going to run away. Dijo helped me intervene after work pattern in a box allowing lies to be spread spewed gives the devil a platform articulating lies reinforces possession the longer the lies are allowed to be spewed the larger the intervention or longer and physical the intervention needs to be i wonder i really do wonder i don't know she's blaming it all on jody i I don't, I don't think I buy it anymore. That was all Jody. I think Ruby was just batshit fucking crazy. Oh my God. I hope, I hope both women get the same amount of sentencing time. They're both, um, we're still waiting on like what exact number they're getting, right? Jesus. I cut more of E's hair. Oh, I cut, I cut more off E head. We douse her with water in the dog wash. E said she wanted to run away. Jody told E she has no idea what she is, what is waiting for her. This is all redacted. July 13. I may have forgotten to write this. On the 11th, I took our face in my hands and spoke to him. Through redacted, love you. I told him to send the demon a message for me. I will not give up. I will not leave. I am going nowhere. Get out. R released the demon and he's been very workable ever since. This morning, the 13th, R broke his fast with brown rice, lentils, black beans, and chicken and water. A hornet kept buzzing around his chicken. I told R to think of the hornet as Satan. Oh my God, this is so delusional. Would you become pals with Satan? Would you sell your soul or chicken to a hornet? He will sting you in the end. R trapped the bee with his sun hat. 
E broke her fast with cheesy potatoes, steak, water, oatmeal, and water. It's so crazy how they're like listing water. So like you're telling me like you're breaking your fast if you drink water so they couldn't even drink water. Oh, bye, Wayne. Have a good night. Take care. R is full of piss and vinegar. She is mad as a hornet and she doesn't call the shots. It's about 90 minutes since R ate. I warn him that the food would either energize him to truth or defiance. He is defiant again. He pooped his pants and telling me no. His poop is too watery to be fasting. Redacted admits R admits to stealing water three times yesterday. R lies. Feels no remorse. E is cheating. The selfish, selfish children who desire only to fake, lie, and attack have zero understanding of God's love for them. They don't know G. Joe is selling her home, this priceless snow canyon gem, so she can purchase land where these two can work. Oh, my God. So you're telling me she's trying to sell her $5 million mansion, buy some land, and then make these two very young kids work on the property? G. Joe has been looking for property with Soros Cactus and is feeling more imminent the need to get these kids to open land. She's willing to consider less than ideal property for them. This is a spiritual matter. I can't in good faith leave you with these two gremlins. I won't do that. These are God's children. Soros don't matter when souls are on the line. One hour later, we move quickly. Jody, Jay, are going on a road trip to look at property in Arizona. Ruby has some cash in the bank. If the property is right, we can move on financing immediately. We decided the escalation of the kids is not manageable here. And now. R is now sitting slash angry slash defiant. E is lying on the floor. We will bring them in. R, I will clean up out in the desert as he has pooped himself. He will then stand and sit on the patio slash shaded. Now I'll see him from the kitchen. E, I will bring him to the cool house. She can sit in the pantry. Oh my God. They will think they won. They will think they got what they wanted. They will relax. Then pop. We will drop them like hot potatoes out in the desert. Their new home. Exclamation mark. Quotations. You are going to get exactly what you asked for. Oppositional force is required for growth, development, maturity. E and R have never experienced oppositional force. They are very weak-minded. Oh, why is this upside down? Oh my God, what is this? This is going to be like a rant. Oh God, this is going to be a rant, guys. Get ready. Pattern. Sending evil away in a long-time possessed person is not one and done deal usually. These wicked spirits in E and R have been pals long before this life. How E and R got to come and get a body cam, get a body can only be explained in me advocating to be their mother. Oh, Jesus. This is not a conceited statement. Wait, so you're saying that, so she says that the reason why E and R are born is because she advocated to be their mom and that's why God gave them life. Oh my God. This is not a conceited statement. God knew I would take my responsibility to mother seriously. Jody volunteered to help. These two souls are very weak of mind. They are fools, truly. E said she would choose the devil over God. What arrogant spew. God is patient not to split her with a bolt of lightning. You do not tempt a God who controls your very breath. The disdain and hatred they have for God is beyond my ability to describe. My spirit is offended. I shudder to think I would never have seen this had I not pushed on them. Holding principles in a box. Boundaries will show you how much possession a soul has. The more boundaries, the more soul will reveal itself. Trial will reveal a soul because of the inherent limits built into a tribulation. Oh my Lord. Holy shit. Back to sending evil away. I wonder if they were projecting. Hear me out. Like, I know people were theorizing about Jody and Ruby being in a relationship. Um, what if they were in a relationship? And what if they felt terrible for being in this relationship? But they were using the children as a way to work together and be in the same room, living in the same household or the fuck. What if they were just projecting the evil when really they thought themselves were evil? Like, I don't know. That's, that's my conspiracy land theory for the day. 
Back to sending evil away. Articulating truth drives evil away. This is a powerful invention, intervention for the possessed. Even if you can start by agreeing to something truthful. E, you are a daughter of God. True. Yes, ma'am. Principle in a box. Following up on articulating a desire for evil to leave with a demonstration of obedience is powerful. Demonstrating a willingness to follow truth is a pattern. Like, what the fuck happened? How did her mind get so fucking fried? Or was it always like this behind closed doors? The Savior using the interactions, go sell all you have and follow me. Go, sin no more. Go wash seven times. Go tell no one. Go and tell the city. Go and preach my gospel. Go feed my sheep. If you can engage a weak-minded soul in a physical activity of obedience, you can begin to break the bond Satan made with the weak. Physically stop the acting out behaviors, begin physically doing good, farm work, lifting boxes, extorting energy, exercises, jump rope, milking cows, weeding a garden, digging trenches. Satan cannot be where there is good. Begin doing slash sweating for good. Heavy physical intensity capture attention. Is this why they make the children do such physical labors and make them clean and do chores? Because if you're sweating, that means you're doing something good. <laughs> oh, God. The problem for ENR is the hard labor is all. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what happened here. For the sake of lifting does not have meaning. Is that like something like devil writing or something like that? Oh my God, I don't know what the fuck that is. We need property where a ranch can be built. Good can be done. Outcomes of prosperous choices can be experienced and felt. And the kids need a good kick from a horse and a cactus to run into. They need natural outcomes. Oh my God. I asked R why slash crossed out what he was thinking about since he was sitting in the shade and he had what he wanted. R answered what I want. Me, what do you want? R, more different foods and a soft bed. Me, why don't you ask Satan? Do you think Satan will give you those things? R, no. Me, why not? R, because he doesn't have the power. Me, why would you serve a God who has no power to give you your desires? Dumb. R, silent. Oh my God, dude, this is so crazy. Redacted had another episode with demons. She gives herself to them. She agreed to stop being deceptive with her facial expressions and crying and whining. Whining is a devil's voice. Whining is always a demon. Redacted hurt facial expressions blame me for her misery. It is E at the center of her misery. Her face is deceptive. After E did stairs, she sat on the park bench looking at the mountain views. She was told to sit and be still and eat her dinner. Carrot, hummus, grilled cheese, water. E in a power plate brought her empty plate to the door and then moved her sun hat. Removed her sun hat. July 14. E woke up. Yeah, they made their kids run up and down the stairs, I think, while carrying heavy objects. E woke up. I reminded her that if she whined, cried, or squinted her eyes at me or soured her face, I would be buzzing her hair. If she is going to act sick, she can look sick. She agreed with a smile. I told her because she didn't listen the night before. She would do two sets of boxes slash stairs with a five-minute break. She did the first set easy and agreeable. After five minutes of rest, she begged, whimpered. When she got to the bottom stair, she slipped and dropped. Oh, my goodness. She wrote slip in quotations marks. So she thinks the daughter is manipulating her and slipped on purpose so she would get out of this, I guess. She slipped and dropped the box. I put her in the dog wash and shaved her head. Then back to the boxes. I told E. E, yes, ma'am, with tears. Me, it's heavier. The boxes, right? E, yes, ma'am. Me, I can help you find relief. You have told so many lies about me that you refuse to be obedient. Why do you keep being buddies with Satan? E, I don't want to work. Me, don't you see it's because you follow Satan that you keep doing boxes? If you were humble, you would be inside making pancakes with Jody and me. Or Julie? It says Julie. E, agreed to sit on the park bench and think about her choices. I made it very clear if she were to move, get up, fidget, talk, take her hat off, she would go back to work. Redacted agreed eagerly. She promised to be obedient. After an hour on the bench, she began moving and looking around. I pulled her into the house and gave her more boxes. Now to R. 
the the fact that she's dialoguing this out is fucking wild. It is crazy. This woman is so fucking delusional. And I don't believe a word that she says now during the sentencing. There's no way she became unbrainwashed. She probably just thinks that like, hey, I'm just going to tell them what they want. I'm going to pretend like I'm sorry. I'm going to pretend like I know that this was all wrong. I don't, I don't buy it. I think Ruby might just be a really fucking good manipulator. Oh, my Lord. Hey, Dominique. Good morning. How are you doing today? Oh, Julie's her sister. So her sister was a sick fuck, too. Oh, wait. I think I do remember. Holy shit. Because I think they mentioned that Kevin was not in these journal entries. That's why they don't believe that Kevin was involved. So you're saying the sister Julie was there. Oof. Isn't, is Julie one of the sisters that was doing like updates, making like YouTube videos about this? I don't know. She has like, oh, she has a daughter named Julie too. Julie did a video on her YouTube. Julie's her daughter. Please not the sister that has custody. Uh, <laughs> Because I know that she has family members, like she has sisters that also do the whole fucking YouTube family shit, okay? Um, when this whole thing came out, a lot of them like felt the need to come out and do like a press conference or something. They did like an Instagram post. They made like YouTube videos about it. I was like, oh my God, this is so weird. Julie is the daughter. Bonnie is the sister. Julie is Ruby's daughter. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. One of the teen daughters then. Because I remember there are also two teen daughters that are in the middle, right? There's like the two oldest. There's Chad, there's Sherry. Two teen daughters. I guess one of them's name is Julie. And then there's E and R, the two youngest one. That might be a yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I, I didn't watch Eight Passengers back in the day. Um, so I only heard of them when the whole lunch fiasco thing happened. She was the one with Pam. Okay. Okay. I was like, oh my God, hold on a second. Because I remember the sisters were very adamant about not knowing what happened. They were saying they were cut off. Um, they said that Ruby went on the D-band. Okay. Okay, okay. Now to R, me, you like sleeping on the hard ground? I slept in a soft bed. Oh my God, she was, <laughs> why was she, like, this is just a cruel, cruel person rubbing it in into her children's faces. You like sleeping on the hard ground? Well, I slept on a nice soft bed. That's so, fu like, what is wrong with you? R, I slept really well. Me, you are mean. Do you enjoy being mean? Wait, so he's mean because he said he slept well? You were hoping for him to be like, oh yeah, sleep on the ground really sucks, mom. I don't know. She's got an ego. You are mean. Do you enjoy being mean? Yes, ma'am. Do you expect me to feed you? Yes. Also, we can't really trust the dialogue verbatim. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of fillers here. I'm sure the kid probably said other things as well. It's not just like, do you enjoy being mean? Yes. I'm sure there was so much more that went into it. And that's, we're only hearing what, we're only seeing what Ruby heard. Okay. Yeah, she's a fucking psycho. Me. I got big over him. So that means she towered over him and threatened him physically with her body. I will feed R. I will not feed a demon. So I would check on you in a bit. And if you want food, then be prepared to tell the truth about your behaviors. Tell the truth of who I am. An hour later, me. You ready? R. No, ma'am. Me. So you would rather have no food and worship the devil. R. Yes, ma'am. E, does first set of books decently, 10 minute break. E, upset to do boxes. Gets them done. Sits on a park bench, one minute, then picks G. Joe's blossom off plant, defiant. More boxes. She refuses, goes to sleep on basement floor. R, stand up, stop picking your nose. The kids both pick their noses until they bleed. Distraction. Me, you happy? R, no. Me, following Satan doesn't make you happy? Shocker. So Satan can't feed you? Who is supposed to feed you? R, God. And R, Christ. Me, this is a game you're playing. Who brings you food? You. Me, 
you want to leave the demons are i don't want to humble i told redacted i wanted to give him dinner with chicken he needs to acknowledge his behaviors he tells me he is missing his opportunity to repent this is not acknowledging his behaviors oh my god dude if the kid if one of the children never escaped and ran to a neighbor they would have died at some point this is ridiculous they would have for sure died at some point because we knew kevin frankie was going to intervene we know Jody is probably just batshit crazy. This is wild. I feel like she almost enjoys this power, this authority, this righteousness. I feel like she enjoyed it so much she was documenting it. And as she was writing this, she was probably lamenting it all over again. Wait, not lamenting. What's uh what's what I'm looking for? Lamenting is like sad, right? Um, yeah, lamenting is sad. She was probably, um, shit, I had the word in my head for a second there. What is it called again when you're kind of like reliving everything all over again? She needs to sell with Lori Vallow. Oh my God. Yeah, they're both horrible. Reveling, maybe reveling. <laughs> Reminiscing. I told Redacted, I want to give him dinner with chicken. He needs to acknowledge his behaviors. He tell me he is missing his opportunity to repent. This is not acknowledging his behavior. I tell R, he is treating me and G. Joe the way he believes he deserves to be treated. A bunch of redactions. I bring him dinner of brown rice, beans, lentils, and water. He takes the bowl and begins eating. I say, no, thank you. Are you going to acknowledge the woman you've been abusing? <laughs> oh, no. She thinks she's the one who's being abused in this relationship. How fucking delusional. Relishing. Okay. Relishing. That's the word I was thinking for too. Relishing, reveling. She literally says this to her son. Are you going to acknowledge the woman you've been abusing just brought you food? Well, the kid probably didn't have time to say thank you because he was probably so hungry. <laughs> this is unbelievable. R, well, I would say thank you, but I wouldn't really mean it. Yeah, because he probably thinks that he's entitled to fucking eat. With that, I reached down and grabbed his dinner and water and said, wow, wow. R tried going back on what he said with some explanation, and I stopped him. Quotations. I would not talk with the demon. Your soul is damned. I would not hear your damnable words. Straight to bed. E has started walking stairs without a box. She's now slipping and falling on purpose. While E was outside today, remember, these kids are, fuck, they're probably fucking hungry. They probably don't have the fucking energy, the calories to burn to do, to do these fucking tasks. So I, no, I don't believe that she's like slipping and falling on purpose. She probably just doesn't have the energy to do all this fucking shit. When E was outside today and it was hot, she acted like she was dying. So pitiful. I told her, E, the heat in hell is so much hotter and God is going to burn the wicked. So either you get used to it or start changing. I really don't believe, sorry, E, I really don't believe that's actually going to happen. It's actually crazy to me that the children are way smarter than these fucking adults. Kids were all in bed. E ate mashed potatoes and turkey and milk. G. Joe jay are looking at rv trailers these kids have no idea the sacrifice is being made for them or jesus is sacrifice already made july 15 saturday there are days and nights that reveal god's most poignant miracles oh mercies and miracles last night god gave me a miracle i absolutely would never ever forget i know when god gives you an errand you know what i wonder if she's still journaling in prison because i she she must be journaling in prison she must be this must be an outlet for her Oh God, I wish we could get a hand a hold of those. I don't I don't think she's sorry. She's probably in the journal writing about how she's tricked everyone and well, we're all fucking idiots and how her and Jody were just doing the God's work. I know when God gives you an errand, you do the best you can to fulfill it. He will protect you. I went to bed around 12 10 a.m. E on the floor next to my bed. R on the patio outside my sliding glass window. Oh man, just writing this, I am shaking. 
shaking if pan oh pam that's the president right shaking if pam hadn't intervened to take a that's one of the children to american fork for her alt tests then i would not have been here and my life and jody's and my family's forever would be different so pam must be the one that introduced jody and ruby i guess and she's basically saying like oh my god thank goodness if it wasn't for pam I would never have known Jody. Our families would not be doing this right now. At 2.45 a.m., I woke straight up out of bed. Straight up. I couldn't see R. He was gone. I spent this... I... Something, the sliding glass door, and there was no sight of him. He, de he did leave an arrangement of rocks in letters and words. He wrote me a message. Too scared, I forgot how to read. I run to Jody's room and woke her up. She came out with me. The message said in Pebbles, Jail, I will call when I get there. Oh my god. He, he believed the shit that his parents were feeding him, or sorry, that his mom was feeding him, that Jody was feeding him, and he was just going to send himself to jail because you know what? Being in jail is probably better than dealing with these two fucking women. Ugh. I will call when I get there. Jay and I scoured the house and yard. Jody got flashlights. Jody and Jay took her car and I got redacted up and went in the mine. Oh God, oh Father, we need a miracle. We need your help now. Send the hosts of heaven. Show us where redacted is. Wait, did she write this before she went out to go look for her children? It kind of sounds like it, right? It seems like... Instead of going out there and finding her children immediately, she decided to write this fucking journal entry. Right? Uh, okay, hold on a second. Maybe not. Please, please, Father, answer how I... How... Please, please, Father, answer now. I've done everything you've asked. Protect me, protect Jody. <laughs> Something is up with her and Jody. Protect us, protect us. I heard in my head, go right. I went left and all the way to the roundabout on the main street to rule it out and make sure he hadn't reached the main road yet. No sign of R. I turned back to go down the dip and then right. Father, 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 hear me now. I go right, then right again. This road doesn't look familiar. I speed up to cover as much road as I can, racing the sun, racing the devil. Then I see R walking on the left side of the road. I call Jody to let her know. I turn the car around and stop. I get out of the car. R is shocked to see me. Get in the car. You shocked to see me? R nods his head and gets in. Redacted in the back. Me and R in the front. 2.45, I wake up. 3 a.m., we leave in cars. 3.14 a.m., I call Jody with R. The sun started lighting the roads just an hour and a half later. The devil wants me in prison. My children, dead. I meet Jody back home. We deliberately, we deliberate in the car while... J and E go back to bed. Which one is J again? Which one is J? Sorry, was one of the middle, middle children's name begin with the J? You said it was A, right? Oh, Julie. Okay. R stands at the garage where we can see him. He has zero remorse, zero fear, zero expression. He is cold, callous, and hard. Angry, he isn't calling the shots. Jody and I agree to buy ourselves time until we have more of an environment conducive to an intervention. We need land. Man, they're just trying to isolate themselves even more. Like the place where they were living at was already isolated, but they want to go somewhere where it's completely isolated where their abuse would go unnoticed. That's why they're trying to buy this huge chunk of land. The spirit told Jody very clearly, don't let these kids' choices ruin your life. We have work to do. You can force repentance. To de-escalate the situation, I brought R, I brought R into the house. I tied a rope to my feet and him, to my waist and his. R would now sleep in a soft bed with me. 7 a.m., R slept. The devil got a bed. Jody taught exaggeration in class. Jay loaded the cooler. I put the kids in my car and took a drive. 8 a.m., a man came to look at Jody's house. 8.30, Jody and I met with the, at the Chewitz gas station. E and J, Jody, take off to Tucson. I drive back to the house with R. He comes in the house. He doesn't leave my side. 
I feed him chicken, rice, lentils, beans, but add a glass of milk. He sits at the counter and eat. He got what he wanted. I give him the book. Theoprastus characters. He gets a pen and his journal. He takes notes. To the onlooker, he appears to be a well-behaved, studious young man, and wouldn't I be thrilled? My son, who wanted to run away, is now by my side, reading and writing. Wouldn't I be relieved? No. I now know that in order to keep my son, I would need to put him back under sedation? I unhooked him from all the bells and whistles and asked him to breathe and thrive on his own, and he went into arrest and stress. Back to sedation we go. The demon is still here, and I purposely put R back into a slumber. Hibernate. To water R, go into the awful state of compliance. Knowing the demon he harpers in his heart is so sick like stitching up a patient knowing you didn't get all the cancer out. And knowing it's only a matter of time before your patient kills over. I don't know what kind of sedation she's talking about. She might just be talking about it metaphorically. I don't know. We would have saw this in the charges, right? Arnie do not want to repent. They hate God per their own behaviors and words. I now see how perfectly reasonable people walk around hating God and worshiping the devil yet appear like good old Joes. Good guys. There is a soul killing infection in my child and my hand is forced to not remove the infection. Agency does not allow me to rid the infection. Arnie like the infection. It is so sick. 8 18 p.m. Just over 12 hours after fighting R, teaching class and leaving, Jody sends me a text. I found the land. The devil does not want us to take R and E out of society. He did not want Jody finding this property. He wanted Jody and I down at the police station at 8, 18 p.m., not discovering a place to bring intervention to his entanglement of my children. Oh, how good the Lord is to those who risk everything to follow him and bring others to him. The hosts of heavens are now on our side. My children and I would know the sacrifices lives put on the line to offer a chance for their salvation. R can only think that he likes the taste of milk and reading again. July 16. Uh, we're like halfway, but there's a lot of redactions. So um, I think there's a lot of redactions coming up. Last night, I tied myself to R, full night of sleep, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., no interruptions, R showers while I watch. Oh, that's creepy. I shower while R is in the closet. I can see the closet door as I shower. R eats chicken, rice, beans, lentils with cheese on a corn tortilla. Three sets of 10 push-ups, reads Theoprastus. Does anyone know what this Theoprastus is? It's like some Bible shit or what is this? Bye, Mama Jama. Have fun at your birthday party. Happy birthday. Yeah, enjoy yourself. Have a good one. Jody's on the way home. He spent the night. He spent the ride lying down with face facing the back of the seat. She doesn't know where they went or why. One might ask, as I myself have, what if we had taken this slower? Would the children have been on board if we hadn't if we hadn't boundaried them so quickly and so clearly? What if instead of a full day of box carrying, we would have them do an hour and breaks in reading and then back to boxes? My answer is, well, yes, the kids would have complied, but they would not be repenting and they would not have given the impression they were repenting. They need things to get hard fast, intense, shocking, change, immediate discomfort, stress to their systems. Why? Because they divulged their secrets. They could have confessed in truth, taking personal responsibility for the discomfort they were causing. Redacted changed the environment of the kids slowly, more reasonably or comforting. We would happen to allow the dumb hypnosis and sleep to stay over the child. We needed to wake the child up to the state of reality, show them where they were really were, the pit of hell. This hope was that they would choose to go to God for forgiveness, to admit their awful state. Instead, they hid. They wanted to lie to themselves that what was done, that what was that what they did wasn't that bad, that they were the victims. They, me, and Jody are the prosecutors. That burning in hell isn't real. That God is, God is that mad and that God doesn't seem to exist. They deny the power of God. I told Art today that he's sedating his choice to do wickedly. I don't want that anymore. My response, yes, you do. You stood alone with only you and your choices. You literally would stand it. You ran away. You refused to sit stand with your choices. And now you are in the house with milk, AC, and a book. And you quite like it, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Me, if you really didn't want evil anymore, you would say, mom, thanks for the book, but I want to do boxes today. Or I want to stand with my choices. You won't do that, will you? No, ma'am. What kid would be like, hey, um, I'd rather do boxes than read a book? 
R, no, ma'am. Me, see, I want to make it clear to you. You have not made my any shifting or change. You are damning your soul. R goes back to writing, yes, ma'am. Weak-minded, undisciplined brat. Note to myself, I never clearly saw the devil and wickedness until recently because I didn't see evil clearly. I didn't combat him. I paddled Yule and placated wickedness. My love of God was sincere, but assume others' love for God was sincere as well. I was deceived. I, you know what? I'm, I'm really not buying that it's Jody. It's, it's the both of them. It's, it's the both of them. I am not buying that Jody is the one who is pulling the strings here. I, I think it's both. July 23. She can't even write the dates right. She's so delusional. To begin a separation from evil toward God, all the darkness needs exposed to light. And once the lies and sin is revealed, the body must engage in good work. The good works needs to be painful. Otherwise, the service becomes another feel-good distraction. A day of fasting and prayer for me after learning my children has been spawns of Satan. R has been out of control. P, poop, lie, steal, run away. E, crying, wailing. You could not know what this has been like unless you were here. Jody and I took E out of the desert. She refused to stay quiet and would scream and scream. Jody found a reservation cemetery, Chiwit Cemetery. She went out in the heat barefoot. E still tried to run. She screamed for another family, water, food, care, love. Oh, Eve, a manipulative ploy. You are loved. After a couple of hours of screaming and speaking nonsense, E finally lays down in the road quiet. We took her home. We took E and R out and J the next day. E and R barefoot to increase the discomfort and decrease the running away. The task at hand was to weed the cemetery. Huge sage brushes, pokies, thorns, broken glass, garbage over full. We spent a couple hours filling black bags. G. Joe's truck bed. The kids began to mellow out a bit. R looked for shade and cheating. We went out the next day and again today. Five hours of weeding, pooling. Five fucking hours in the desert heat. R finally started getting the hang of it. This is getting easier. I feel I'm getting stronger. I want to pull the weed out of my heart. What am I doing with my life? I don't want to live like this anymore. All children need the experience of pulling obnoxious weed, sweating in the sun, working while thirsty, knowing what doing in an anonymous act of service feels like. They are each begging to see how nice the cemetery looks after days of their hard work. Yesterday, R was devious and put his hand in the toilet. He said he was hot and wanted to cool off. Jody and I reflected how disgusting and deviant that is. It is a problem that R has no problem being gross. July 25, 7 to 8.30 a.m., women's group. Mm, I wonder who was a part of the women's group. How old were the kids? Um, I think one of them had just turned 12, and the other one may have been 10 or 11. Pretty young. 8.30 a.m. Ruby takes E, R, and J to Chiwitz Cemetery. Each child is given a bag to pick up broken glass and weeds. We work for about 15 minutes and a red vehicle with a woman, Indian, shows up. She sits and watches us for about 15 minutes, taking pictures or a video. I tell the kids, oh my gosh, I wonder if there's a footage of that somewhere out there. I tell the kids to stay right by me and keep their faces from being pictured. We continue to pull weeds. The woman gets out of the vehicle and walks towards me. What are you doing here? You don't belong here. This isn't your land. You are trespassing. I tell her I'm weeding. She tells me, how would you feel if I came and poked around your cemetery? What are you stealing? Me, nothing. We are weeding, picking up trash. She wants to know what's in the bags. I say weeds and broken glass. You can see for yourself. She tells me to leave the bags and get off her land. It's not good enough for you that you come and take our land and now you want more what you have isn't good enough you have to come take our cemeteries too what's wrong with you you were not raised right so much disrespectful i again remember this is from her perspective so there's a lot here that she could be convoluting but i feel like the conversation probably went why the fuck are you guys here why are you making your kids do this you guys are out in the sun you're picking up glass you're making them do weeds i told her i do not mean any disrespect i'm honoring your people i'm honoring i'm offering dot 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 
She would not let me get any words in. I collect my children and walk to the car. Oh my God, I would love to see this interaction. She yells at the kid that they will grow up to be just like their mother, white and full of privilege. Mind your own business. Get out. I'm filing a police report. Wait, who's filing their police report? I tell the kids to get into the car. Oh, wait. Was Ruby trying to fill out a police report? I tell the kids to get into the car. She wants me to wait so she can get a good photo of us. The license plate. I don't think so. We drive off as she stumbles to get her camera app up. This woman is projecting all her anger and aggression onto me. She told me I was walking around acting like I owned the place when that is what she was doing. She wasn't raised right. She was disrespectful. We leave and I talk to ENR about her. This woman was attacking us with her distortion. Mm. A couple days ago, we met a woman, Redacted, who thanked us for helping keep the graveyard clean. And now this woman tells us that we are aggressive when really she is the aggressor. I told the kids is exactly what they are doing. I'm helping them and they mock and reject my help. God sent me to help them repent and they turn me away. The kids seem a bit affected because they are so numb. I don't know how long it will hold. R is very unemotional. E, not so much. She is seeing and hearing evil. I told her that she's invited evil. It's her change to now send them away. It's now her charge. You created this, E. The good news is that because you created this, you can now destroy this. Send them away. August 1. So we're about a month before the children were finally uh, found. August 1, Tuesday. Jay Jody went to Tucson today to look at property of 500 acres. Oh my God, I'm so glad that they never made the move. E and R are both defiant and unwilling to soften. E this week perpetually screamed outside. Jody and I accountable, I don't know what that says, her, and took her to the hellhole road. Yes, there is such a road on your way to Las Vegas. She was to run on the dirt road. She ran for a bit and then she started manipulating. I told her to run up an incline on a hillside, touch a tree, and return 100 yards max. She threw herself onto a tree. Jody pulled her out, breaking her flip-flops. After an hour of E jumping in bushes, we get in the trunk. We get in the truck to find a cactus. Redacted walked right up to the cactus and threw herself in the middle of it. It was unhuman. She acted like it didn't hurt at all. She cuddled right in. I watched her press her foot up against the cactus ear. I watched with my mouth open. She's so numb. After being cozy with the cactus, E got up and spoke with Jody for about 10 minutes. Jody and E walked to the truck and rolled down the windows. E said, may I have permission to speak? Yes. Can I have another chance at running up the hill? Yes. We get in the truck and drive to the hill. E gets out and comes to my window. Mother, what would you like me to do? I instructed her to run to the dead tree and then come back. E replied, I would rather jump into the cactus. What evil, what deception. This girl would choose to be shot and die, to be humble and do what she's told. There's no point to where she will turn. The next day, July 30, Sunday, we put E in the closet and contemplate what to do. She screams much of the day. She doesn't get water if she screams. She refuses to eat. Remember, this is from her perspective, so a lot of this could be bullshit. Um, in the police report, I think they said that it was Jody that forced the kids to jump into the cactus. July 31, Monday. Jody wakes up from a dream. God lets her know we have done everything we can to get E attention. Lord, don't continue these physical interventions. They will only bring resentment. E is great angry about her feet. Dress her wounds and leave her to me. This intervention gives the opportunity for E to soften and see that we aren't hurting her. Jody cleansed her heels. The hydrogen peroxide didn't sting. E is numb to it. The spirit has a very strong the spirit was very strong as Julie and I witnessed Jody cleaning what didn't deserve to be clean. After dressing the wounds, Jody carried her back to the closet. I wonder if this is the closet where they found the child or if this is the, the safe room lock place thing. E did scream and sulk and ask for water. I gave her lunch, leftovers, oh my god, leftovers over several meals she wouldn't eat, and she finally ate. I gave her water and then the scriptures. This is the first opportunity to have her reading material since coming to Jody's. Me, when you see God, he will judge you out of these books. Do you honor your mother? No. Do you keep his commandments? No. Did you repent? No. You are in big trouble. You better get really familiar with what's in here. Our feet are swollen from standing. He's angry. Nobody cares. I told him he's acting like a man having a heart attack and gets his feeling hurt because nobody cares about the sliver 
and his finger. When your soul is dying, nobody cares about your feet. August 2nd, Wednesday. Jody and Redacted are still away. E is distracted by being in the house, getting socks, being held and carried and out of the elements. She reads her Bible. She ate her beans and rice and chicken. She's quiet. R sat outside yesterday and didn't manipulate. I asked R, why didn't he manipulate yesterday? He said, because he wanted to change. I said, no, that's not true. You didn't manipulate because you weren't uncomfortable. You weren't hit. Today, R is standing outside on the patio by the room. It is raining. The rain is doing what? R washing what it touches the rocks. Me, yes, you desecrated these rocks and the rain is cleaning them. Let it clean you too. Redacted pooped himself. He is angry. August 6, 2023. R rage comes out as he can't have what he wants, which is to serve the devil, aka have the responsibility and have me, mom, tout on him, cuddle him. He wants both. Feed me, hug me, be tender with me. Shower me in the praise and affection and let me lie to you, abuse you. Today he raged for hours, F you, at least 50 times. I'm not going to lie anymore. I'm not going to change. Take me to jail where I belong. August 7th, Redactic will come start fixing the basement so Jody can sell her home. This is great news. Only R is yelling obscenities. Jody asks, Redacted, Redacted, what are you going to say when you see God? F you. R answered, sure. Redacted, cancel. This gave us a full day for Redacted at the end of the day. He was docile, compliant. E cry today, compliant. Man, these two women sitting in prison, they're getting it way too easy. August 8. Redacted is very defiant. I found his fingers poopy. He keeps pooping and peeing his pants. Within five minutes of him going to the bathroom, he went in his pants, tried hiding it from me. Later, the spirit told him, told me to ask him some questions. I asked them, I asked them from an assumption position. Also redacted here. August 9. Mom to R. You keep saying you're unwilling to do uncomfortable things, but I watch you continuously do uncomfortable things the devil tells you to do. You'd rather be uncomfortable than be obedient. This isn't really about being uncomfortable. This is about being adamantly refusing obedience. You would rather be uncomfortable rather than obedient. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Mom to R. When did you sell your soul to the devil? R, two or three. Mom, did he come to you or you to him? He came to me. Mom, and what is he giving you in exchange for your soul? Money, fame, strength, person, R, nothing. I tell R he can keep his soul. He can have a life. He redacted. He stay here to stay here. I told him to think about, I told him to think down have wants i don't know to be obedient to a devil who offers nothing in exchange for every day r becomes aggressive and destructive he starts banging and hitting doors i went in and kicked him knock this off r continues to be destructive and violent i put on a pair of boots i went in and kicked him again you want me to stop what are you getting from satan's when he tells you to kick the door nothing but more pain you want me to help you yes no ruby you want me to feed Feed you? R. Yes. Ruby. No. You want me to something and provide for you? R. Yes. Ruby. No. You want to serve the devil and fight, fight me and destroy all that I provide and then expect me to give to you. Go ask the devil to help you. Go ask the devil to feed you. I left R. Um, yeah. Her kicking him with her boots was in the... Um, that was mentioned before, too. I left R, was quiet, contained in the closet. I did leave him yelling. I get that you're rageful. I get that you're angry. You should be. But you got to aim that anger in the correct direction. You keep aiming it at me. I'm trying to help you get your life back. Get angry and denounce Satan. When I left R, was quiet for a bit and then started calling Satan a big lying piece of baloney. I, you know what? I just think she was just a cruel, disgusting person. And she was just using this as a disguise to like, to be abusive to her children. He continued raging and yelling and crying. I believe you and what do you give me? Nothing but pain. You lie. And I believed you and I'll admit it. I've been a fool to follow you, but no more. It's not too late. I can turn my life around. Get lost, get lost. I can get my life back through obedience. Is this sincere? His actions will show. R is manipulating his hand. Wet his pants. 
Ruby to R. You cannot manipulate your way out of pain. The only way out of pain is to humble yourself. You need to pray and show God how you have desecrated your precious body, how you misuse your body. Beg him to help you. I've been such a fool. I don't want to make these choices anymore. Please help me here. God, I won't live this way anymore. My life is crappy. It doesn't have to be this way. Obedience is the way. It's desecrated my soul. I know I can change. I still have a chance. My chance is getting smaller and smaller. I'm not going to choose this anymore. I'm not going to make myself feel anymore. I've made myself such a fool. I believe all these lies and they bring me pain. God, live. I've made choices be so idiotic. I've been so aggressive, so vile, so mean. God, please hear me in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know what this fucking thing is. August 10. Jody and Jay are still in Arizona. They should be back tonight. I'm watching R in the closet and E on the back patio. It's warm outside and raining. I told R the rain is cleaning the rocks from dirt. RP. I told her to feel the rain clean her. I told her she can be as clean as she wants to be. I checked it on R and asked what he was thinking about. How my choices have led me here. R. Did you know you were in the dark pit of despair? R. What do you mean? Chilling, she says. There's something redacted here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to keep a diary entry on this. It's so sickening. E stood in the rain for two hours. A bunch of redactions here. August 15. So we're about two weeks away from them finding the children. For the human who is not humble, today's the constitutes the vast majority. You have to get your bend at your breaking point. R never would have disclosed his sins had he not had a hope that confessing would bring a sense of relief. His motive, because he was, is not humble, was to feel better. Because of all the distractions were taken away and be any belief he was getting them back was banished. We were consistent. We followed through. R was left with only one outlet to find relief. Confession. The world we live in today does not support children being uncomfortable. They, the adults, are uncomfortable with children being uncomfortable. And so the children are comforted, entertained, distracted from the need to confess and change. Stripping down a child's world to the basics of beans and rice and hard work would be considered abuse. And it's not. It's necessary for the prideful child. Now that R has his behaviors out, all of them, he feels like a failure, a monster, useless, worthless. The relief he felt in confession was short-lived, and now there is nowhere to hide. So he becomes overly aggressive, destructive, and combative. Foul language I've never heard is now pouring out. It is the only distraction, pee, poop, damage. The despair comes in. He is weak, infectious, hopeless, and never felt worse. A setup from the devil now is the work. It has been three months of consistent boundaries and putting up with his terrorizing to get his confession out. Who would do this in a real world? I don't know of anyone who would feel who would feed their kids in America beans, lentils, rice, and chicken for three straight months and refuse all distraction. This is why Americans are so full of sin and are ready for destruction. They won't repent. Ooh, that's us, y'all. What in chat if you're an American? August 16. Jody and Ruby are two sick people. Mm-hmm. They sure are. August 16. Day two of R jumping on a mini trampoline. He needs a lot of help with balance and coordination. Today, I asked him to take off the sock, one sock, by balancing on the opposite foot. Lift up one foot and remove the sock while staying balanced. He fell over, hit his nose on the ground, began bleeding. I gave him a wet rag to wipe his face and toilet paper. He dabbed his face merely to smear the blood. Then he blew his nose so harsh through the toilet paper, he got new blood on his face and all over his shirt. The easiest exercise he is asked to do, he refuses. With the decrepit statum you will expect of a 90-year-old. He plays completely helpless. His body is full of evil, puffy infection. He won't participate in the responsibility of flushing it out. Ours life, meaning, and purpose has been don't get caught. And now he's caught. He wants to be done with life. He feels he... He feels he has no meaning. Oh my god, this is so sad. Oh, yo, yo. Dual national here. I live in Australia and the US. Wait, what? Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I'm a one in chat. This woman hated her children. Yeah. Mm hmm. August 21, 2023. Poking is a strategy technique R seems to respond to. Poking, pouring cold water, towel, whip. August 22, 2023. First day, R soaked and jumped as told. He did wet his pants twice. God pelted hail from the heavens he is poking r as well r stayed jumping hail in august in saint george is a mystery a heavenly validation of this intervention 
Um, oh, okay. All right, we're almost done. We have like one last page. August 27th. So three days before getting caught. Or was it three days or two days? A visited for a week last week. I picked her up last Sunday, 20th, and took her home to Springville on Friday. J, A, and Pam packed 20 boxes, took them to a storage shed in Springville. A gave her two weeks notice. R spent the 22nd, 25th peeing, pooping. He's out of control. He's defiant, abusive, and mean. Oh my God, that's so wild. So she thinks the kids are the ones that are abusive, and she thinks her and Jody are the abused. They are the victims here. Did you see... Did you just say that... What's the video? Yeah, I mean, it seems like if this is the life that he has to live, like, he probably didn't want to live this life anymore. He'd rather go to jail than be here with his mom. They also made a connection video around that time, which is crazy. Is it still up? The older teenager had a job. Uh, wasn't she picked up at the library or something? He refuses to do what he is asked. Just when I think we found the technique that will work, R digs in and fights harder. Willing to try anything that would grab his attention. I whipped him with a belt yesterday. E2. She peed all over Jody's garage floor. Screamed at her and lied to her. She's out of control. E seemed to give me her attention after the whipping. She swept the garage with some muscle and mopped it. She did a good job. R increased his defiance. Tuesday morning, no Wednesday afternoon. Something about San Diego being crossed out. San Diego taught New Jersey Institute of Technology, U of Washington, Dean of the Computing College, Robert Friedman. Send one essay for each girl. PDF of curriculum, Venmo. That's it. Um, and then they were caught afterwards. Um, yeah, this is... Um, we weren't ready for this. This was way worse than what was mentioned in the police report. And there were a lot of things that they, in my opinion, left out. I really hope that... I don't know. I'm like scared for the kids because what if Kevin Frankie gets custody or like another family member? And what if the family member pushes these kids to have a relationship with their mother? You know how like sometimes when like some really horrible shit happens to you and then you have family members who are like, oh, you know, giving excuses for the abuser and then try to get you to forgive them. <sighs> I don't know. That's what I'm kind of worried about. I'm scared that, you know, what if Kevin Frankie gets what if he gets custody of these kids and then pushes them to have a relationship with their mom? 